Here's an old-fashioned word for bat, the animal, that has no business being old-fashioned. It's easy to say, it's easy to comprehend, it's a perfectly normal compound word, and it is equal parts hilarious, adorable, and terrifying. What did we used to call a bat? A flitter mouse. Flitter mouse. Look at all the mice flitting around. I don't know whether to laugh, say, aw, or duck the hell out of here. Flitter mice. Flitter mice. <laughs> Why do we call them bats? Flitter mice is so much better. Spread the word, we're bringing flitter mouse back. <laughs> flitter mice. Hey, if you like random word stuff with like a side dish of immature philosophical angst, come along if you feel like it. <laughs> well, one of you has a pierced nose and I can prove it. Go with me on this one, it's gonna be fun. In Old English, the word for nose was basically nose. And the word for poke a hole into or pierce was thrillion. And the noun of this verb was thrill. Piercing, thrill. Side note, that funky letter at the front of that word is called a thorn, and it's basically obsolete except for in Icelandic, and it has become TH. So then, a fun compound word was made. Nose thrill. Nose thrill. Nose thrill. Nose thrill. Nostril. Nostril! Nostril! I hope you feel so cool and sexy today with your etymologically proven double nose piercings. Nostrils. Hey, if you enjoy learning random facts that you can share with your friends and family to make them roll their eyes, which is exactly what I did this morning and it was so fun, come along, because I got more. A word's current meaning can't be determined, let alone prescribed, by the word's history. But that doesn't mean its history isn't interesting. Idiot, for example. Of course, you know that idiot means a stupid person. And you may also know that for a portion of its 800-year history in English, it was a technical term. For instance, in Old English laws, an idiot was a person who was born without the capacity to reason, whereas a lunatic was someone who became that way. But whatever else it's meant specifically, it's also always had the general pejorative meaning that this commenter deftly illustrates. But before it was English, it was French, and before it was French, it was Latin, and before it was Latin, it was Greek. And it had the general meaning of an ignorant person throughout that whole time, but in Latin and Greek, it also meant a lay person, a person without professional skills. And as a lay person, an idiot was kept out of public affairs. So an idiot was a private person. And a private person keeps to one's own self. And there we get to the root word, Greek idios, meaning one's own. As in idiosyncrasy, one's own characteristic, a trait peculiar to an individual. Or idiolect one's own language, or idioblast, a plant cell that differs markedly from neighboring cells. <laughs> when I say the word snarky, the meaning that comes into your head has only been around since the late 90s. I know, I'm as surprised as you are. The OED says the word's been around since 1906, but back then it meant irritable. The sense of being witty in a caustic or snide way has apparently only been around since 1997. And snark is actually a back formation of snarky that didn't appear till 2002. I've gotten this from a couple sources, but the online etymology dictionary is a good one. But don't you feel like you've just always known that snarky means being a smartass? I know I have. I'm pretty eager to find out what these citations from 1997 and 2002 are. Haven't seen that yet. More research is in order. Let me know if you find them before me.